Well, I think we've, we've probably never found ourselves in the last hundred years in a, in a period of so much income inequality. That is, the time when the rich are getting richer at a faster and faster rate and the poor are getting poorer at a faster and faster rate. And so you have to think about that inequality in income in terms of, of health care and what, uh, what that means to people receiving it. Because it means that that, the, that same kind of inequality is reflected in what we are willing as a society to allow people uh, who are of low income to, um, to have in the way of access to, um, uh, to health care. Um, in the local area, um, for example, we have seen um, a, a large growth in the numbers of people who, can, uh, who are of low income but who can access health care in the, in the last uh, 15 to 20 years. But the, at the same time, we have seen far greater numbers of people going from a point of uh, reasonable income to becoming low income. And um, so we're playing catch up. Um, on the surface, it looks like we're, um, we're providing more and more access. We are providing more uh, access to more uh, uh, people, but uh, there are more people out there who are in need of access. So that's a, a very difficult um, problem in, in equity. And it's, a, it's an attitudinal problem uh, in, in which we uh, uh, can't necessarily count on people who are better off to back the kinds of programs that will uh, make sure that everybody has access uh, to care. I think also that um, when access is, uh, is very limited, quality tends to um, be limited as, as well. Uh, there are only so many resources out there um, that are available to, to people and we try to make sure that uh, everyone has the uh, basic resources that are uh, important to them. We certainly are sure to provide emergency care, for example, uh, to people. No one would want somebody to fall down on the street in front of them and just drop dead and say, well, too bad, um, you know, we, there's uh, nothing that can be done about it. We, we make sure that, that emergency services are covered. But when you start looking at the preventive end of, uh, of things, at the, uh, at the fact that, uh, that it is prevention, it's, uh, it's health education, it's exercise, it's diet, uh, it, it's all those kinds of things that, uh, uh, that people can do um, a little bit better for themselves, we, we tend not to be supportive of that. Um, because we say, no, we've got to pay for the emergencies. Um, we're not so concerned about that. So I think that we, we have ourselves in a, in, a, in a position of denying access uh, to care to, uh, to many people. And um, it is a shame because we are, are uh, not able to take advantage of their productive capacity of the dreams that they have to, to move forward and to have a better life. And, uh, and we should be better able to do that. The work has to come from both ends. That is to say, it has to come from the political will of uh, the general population, and it has to come from the individual actions of uh, people in need of uh, health care services. Uh, first of all, from the, from the uh, political will, um, um, uh, the viewpoint of it. Um, people have to be concerned about um, the services that are available to everyone. We, we live on one planet uh, together. We can't say some people will get service, other people will get maybe just a little bit of service, and, uh, and that's all there is. On the other hand, um, those who are in need of service have to do things that are, are more preventive in, um, in, in nature, um, but that's difficult. It's, uh, it's one thing for me to say, well, I'll go to the gym and, and exercise or I will um, spend what I need to spend to make sure that I'm, I'm aware of uh, uh, my 
dietary responsibilities to myself and, and, uh, and, and to make sure that I keep up with that and, and, and so forth. It's a very different prospect for those who are not in a position to, uh, to see that as the, as the primary things that they have to take care of in their, in their day to day life. So we have to make it easier for that to happen. Healthcare tends to, um, to form patterns. People tend to form patterns that are, are based on, on their own previous behavior, maybe based on, on what they learned from their, their parents, their grandparents, and, and so forth. And sometimes we get stuck in those uh, uh, patterns. And so it becomes confusing, I think, to the consumer and particularly to uh, low-income consumers who don't have as many choices that, uh, that they can make. Uh, we who are involved in, in uh, developing programs uh, for care um, have some knowledge uh, about those programs and we, and we say, okay, here's, here's a new program, here's something for you to take advantage of. But it takes a lot longer for people to, uh, to respond and, and to um, gain an equal amount of knowledge about why different ways of doing things are, are necessary, different, different changes uh, uh, in their behavior are necessary, and, and so forth. So we need a little bit of patience, I think, in, yeah. in terms of uh, bringing people along and, and uh, making sure that they're, making, uh, that they're changing their behavior and their uh, ways of accessing care in tune with the changes that we're making administratively.